In other words, this should be said, disclosure, by the Spirit for the members of the team individually. Why do we know that? Because we've got this word each one here, and that's Greek word akastos, which is here used in the dative, and that's really important because in the Greek the dative means it's for your benefit. It's actually an attic phrase, but I don't want to get too technical with you. I just want you to see that A, the verse is mistranslated by all the Bibles, and B, it's fuzzy manifestation. That doesn't what it says. It's disclosure by the Spirit for the members of the team, for the benefit of the team. Who's the team? Well, what's the context? This is 1 Corinthians 12, body of Christ. Okay? And there's some Pharaoh again. And he's using it as a participle again because he's making it more dramatic. Participle operates as a noun. And then you know that because this word toe here. Alright? He's turned the participle into a noun. So he's being very dramatic. But to each one of us is given the disclosure, not manifestation, by the Spirit each one of us but to each one of us is given the disclosure by the spirit for the benefit of the team pros tos and pharaoh bringing it together for the team you got that this is real important now the body of Christ is composed of many members correct we know that you can read that even in translation of 1 Corinthians 12 but each one of us is getting some disclosure by the Spirit. I know things about the Bible. I know things about God you don't know. And you know things about God I don't know. Got that? You're special. So am I. We're all special in Christ because Christ is special. And we're all reflections of him, but we're partial. Each one of us is partial. To each one is given, however, the disclosure of the Spirit. The Holy Spirit resides in each one of us. All of him resides in any one of us. But any one of us are not wholly equal in knowledge, in ability to God, obviously. But God resides in each one of us wholly. You got that? The same thing is true for his word. See, here's the word, and it's in translation. And I just showed you some of the things that are wrong with the translation. But not everything is wrong with the translation. But to each one is given. That's the Greek here, hekastoi. Sorry about my Greek. I have stuff in my mouth. They did, did dote. Hekastoi, they did dote. Okay, that's a, that's a good enough translation for this. So it's right. Okay, but this word right here is wrong. It's not manifestation. It's disclosure, as you can see in the lower left-hand window. It's not talking about his appearance. I mean, it's a play on words with appearance, but its primary meaning is disclosure. So each one, each one is given a disclosure by the Spirit. For what? For the whole team. So the whole team of the Bible is in many pieces, and each one has the word in it, but not perfectly, even as this translation is not perfect. But that doesn't mean the word isn't perfectly in the, um, the, the, the common team, the common team of the original Bible manuscripts, the common team of the body of Christ. Each one of us has a spirit in him, but each one of us is not perfect. Yet the Spirit wholly indwells. This translation is partly exactly like the original. All right? These, this is the original. And we saw that the original is not, is not perfectly preserved either. See? Look. All right? This is wrong in the copy. Well, this is, this is, this is sorry, this is wrong in the translation. Okay, but we still know what God's saying. You got that? All these words, they got little differences, like this one's got a period. This is the Texas Receptus. There's no period in the original. We all know that. It's no big deal. 
doesn't stop me from knowing what God's word is. This is capitalized. It shouldn't be capitalized. It doesn't stop me from knowing what God's word is. This one is the most correct version of the verse. Stephanos. Okay, and that happens to be a Byzantine, slightly Byzantine text. Okay? These little, these little accent marks are not in the original either, but we still know what the words are. That's why they could put the, the accent marks there. They know what the words are. The word of God is preserved. And it's preserved in, look, all these. This represents 25,000 manuscripts. Each one, see? But to each one is given. Each one. Each one of these manuscripts has God's word in it, but not wholly in it. God is holy, and God is holy in us, but we aren't holy in God. You, you understand that. If we were holy in God, we'd never sin. All right? But to each one is given, given, the disclosure by the Spirit. So each one of these manuscripts is going to have the disclosure by the Spirit in it. So too the translation. But it's a question of percentage. You got that? In the whole, we got the whole thing. We got the whole Word of God. You can't cut out any one translation. I can't cut out the Byzantine, all the Byzantine manuscripts. I won't have the whole Word of God. I can't cut out even the Textus Receptus. I won't have the whole Word of God. There's going to be something unique to the Textus Receptus, which none of these other documents have, which actually preserves words disclosed by the Spirit that the others don't have. Just like you are, are one also. There's something unique about you that God created in you that the world can't do without you. If you don't exist, the world is incomplete. God created that necessity out of you. He did it out of me too. That's why even a Hitler was necessary. And it's hard for us to understand why God would create a Hitler and what, it, what was it that came out of Hitler that would make him be needed. But that has to be true. Or God wouldn't let him exist. So too, these manuscripts, they contain in aggregate the whole word of God. And to each one is given the disclosure by the Spirit for what? The benefit of the team, the common good. The common good isn't really a good translation. It's too vague. All right? That's what verbal plenary inspiration means. Now, Satan would have you think, just like he says in the Quran, because this is where that argument is made, Satan would have you think that, oh, if the translation's not perfect, then, you know, the whole book has to be perfect, letter for letter, like stupid Gail Ripplinger thinks, because she can't even read the English. She doesn't even know that Lucifer means morning star in Latin. So count her out, and all of her people, and everybody listens to her. So she thinks, as do a lot of other stupid KJV people, that, oh, every word in the King James has to be perfect or it's not from God. No, that's not how God works. But to each one, see, we saw that from the Greek texts, which all, you know, had the same words here. But to each one, 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 each individual is given the disclosure of the Spirit. So the Spirit, and that's the, the topic of this whole chapter, let me get it back so you can see it. All right. Spiritual gifts. That's the theme. And it's for what? The body of the Christ. There are varieties of ministries, but the same Lord. There are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are varieties of effects, but the same God works. Okay. One is given the word of wisdom, another is given knowledge, another is given faith, another gifts of healing. Of course, that's not, a lot of these gifts aren't, aren't true anymore, but they were at the time. All right, affecting miracles. Well, miracles happen to all of us 24-7 now. Learning the word of God requires the Holy Spirit's power. It's a miraculous act. That's why you have to use 1 John 1-9 or you're not learning anything but hot air. 